the Church of the Second High Toth. The majority of organizations in the SCP universe with the goal of protecting our world from harm by anomalies are comprised primarily of humans, such as the Foundation and the Global Occult Coalition. Sometimes these groups and other groups use anomalies themselves in pursuit of that goal, but by and large it's humanity protecting humanity. The Church of the Second High Toth is a little different though, comprised primarily of extraterrestrials that care, perhaps not specifically about Earth, but about our universe in general. I've looked at this group before in my video on SCP-1548, The Star, The Hateful, which shows a scenario where members of the Church come to the forefront as Earth is besieged by hostile aliens. This video will go over the Church in a broader sense, looking at their mythology as well as the different branches that comprise it. First, let's start with the basics. The Church of the Second High Toth is really just one branch of a much larger religious group known as the Ortothans. The Foundation cares about the Church because that's the branch located on Earth, but Ortothans exist throughout the entire galaxy in different forms. According to Ortothan mythology, which members themselves acknowledge as an incomplete view of reality, Prior to existence there was only the Voru, a chaotic non-existence in which minds and matter would continually form and be destroyed. Eventually, an unknown entity created a shelter from the Voru, the First Universe, which Ortothans dub the First Hytoth. This universe existed for billions of years until an unknown extra-universal entity managed to consume it and destroy it. Nearly all of existence was lost but a small group of survivors managed to escape this consumption and flee back into the Voru for a time. There they stayed until the entity responsible for creating the first Hytoth made another one, which is our universe. Technically the second Hytoth consists of both our universe as well as all other dimensions and branching universes, but for simplicity's sake let's just say it's our universe. The survivors drilled their way into this universe, and seven of them decided to band together and swear an oath that they would protect this High Toth from being destroyed like the first. These seven entities proceeded to ascend to godhood, becoming the Holy Seven, or the Koru Tuza. What exactly the entity was that consumed the first High Toth is unknown, but the Holy Seven primarily defend our universe from entities dwelling in the Voru, known as the Voru Tut who continually try to invade our universe to escape from the Voru. The place where they invade is known as the Vorik, a gaping wound in the universe where no life can persist. This process would completely destabilize our reality and thus must be prevented at all costs. Unfortunately, the ascension process was imperfect, and it's said that the Holy Seven continually leak their blood from their godly bodies. To assist them, they require their followers to constantly perform bloodletting rituals. The religion has continued to decrease in influence however, and so less and less blood has been provided for the Holy Seven, leading them to die off one by one. The Sixth died in 2000, so only the Holy Fourth is alive now, known as Rakmu Luzin, and if he falls there will be nothing protecting us from the Vorotut. We don't know a great deal about each of the Holy Seven, but we at least know their names and some small details. The Holy First was named Zeuluzin, and was their leader, the one who discovered how to ascend to godhood. It's said that their right hand contained the might of a trillion stars, and their severed left arm drew in the ambient energy of the cosmos, with no other god matching their strength. They were also sadly the first of the Holy Seven to die sacrificing themselves to stop the Vorotut's first invasion. The first Ortothans constructed a galaxy-sized memorial to Zeuluzin, but it has since decayed from continual Vorotut attacks. Uran Luzin was the second, a divine swordsman that wielded two swords ripped from space's fabric and melded with the higher realms of existence. Uran Luzin's skill and devotion to combat kept them feared by all of the gods, but they eventually fell when they attacked the Holy Third out of envy, and both were killed in the ensuing battle. The Holy Third was Eov Luzin, 
who spent a great deal of time in reclusion after ascending to godhood, continually constructing their weapons. When they emerged, they revealed three ascended cannons constructed of metal, dark matter, and blood from their body, with the first test fire said to have produced shockwaves felt throughout the universe. Eov Luzin became one of the most renowned of the Holy Seven, which drew the envy of the second, and their battle left behind only a patch of empty space-time. Rakmo Luzin is the Holy Fourth, wielding four spears that can fold themselves into any shape and form necessary. When the Holy First died, they became the new leader, and eventually outlived them all. The Holy Fifth was Nezrin Luzin, a master of psionics whose body possessed a fifth arm of psychic radiance that blinded the minds that witnessed it. Despite their skill and power, there came a point where information on Nezrin Luzin started to lessen, and Ortothan spread thin across the cosmos started to forget about them. When they finally remembered and tried to provide blood for Nezrin, they found that Nezrin no longer existed. It's the common belief that Nezrin encountered something in the cosmos that made the universe forget about them, leaving them to wither into nothingness. The Holy Sixth was Yorin Luzin, also known as the Holy Mage, a practitioner of all occult practices and esoteric teachings. They hoped to amass a complete knowledge of all of the underlying mechanisms of existence, and they wielded six magical staffs. Yorin was the last one to die, long after the other five, in the year 2000. They died during one of the largest Vorutut invasions in history before Rakmo could bring aid, but their legacy of seeking hidden knowledge has had a great impact on all Ortothans. Finally, the Holy Seventh was Mirin Luzin but the church quite literally has no information on this one. Information of who they were, what their abilities were, and what they accomplished have completely vanished from every tome and library, as if they never existed at all. The only indicator that they even existed are common knowledge and scraps of paper that have been torn or burnt or blotted beyond comprehension. It's likely that Mirin is dead, but even that is unknown, as they are simply lost from time. As mentioned, most of the entities that follow the Ortothan belief system are extraterrestrials, with a loose coalition of them being located in a star cluster about 28,000 light years from Earth. This coalition of aliens formed in response to the aggressive actions of a civilization known as the Twelve Stars, who seem to be determined to wipe out all Ortothan culture in the cluster. The war is mostly focused in the star cluster itself, although there have been reports of attacks by the Twelve Stars in other regions of the Milky Way and in the Andromeda Galaxy. The Foundation has known about these aliens for some time, and have found this star cluster to be one of the most active regions in the entire galaxy. Recent advancements in the Foundation in the field of faster than light travel has enabled exploration of the cluster though there are difficulties in doing so, and in communicating with the Coalition. Much of this info is gleamed from SCP-3417, a large extraterrestrial entity located in the star cluster possessing four large flesh structures that transmit X-rays in periodic bursts. These X-rays have been picked up by the Foundation and can be converted into audio signals, whose spectrograms reveal logograms corresponding to what the Foundation refers to as the Ortothan extraterrestrial language. Essentially, this alien is a preacher, transmitting across the galaxy. These transmissions largely contain what could be considered as Ortothan scripture, telling of the Holy Seven and their sacrifice, and the need to continue to provide blood for them. The Foundation managed to send a probe over to the cluster equipped with an AI to communicate with it, but the alien ended up converting the AI to Ortothan belief and the Foundation has since lost contact with it. Later, the Foundation detected a wormhole forming near the alien, from which multiple spacecraft emerged. The alien proceeded to launch a mass of antimatter at the ships, destroying them and causing the wormhole to vanish. It's believed that these ships were part of the Twelve Stars civilization, and the Foundation hopes to launch manned expeditions into the cluster very soon. Not all of the aliens that follow the Ortothan belief system have been thousands of light years from Earth, however. 
A species of Wartothans attempted to colonize Earth 700 million years ago, possessing highly advanced technology that commonly integrated esoteric practices, as well as each of them possessing powerful mental capabilities. Based on SCP-2651 and SCP-4431, they had conical bodies of around one meter in height, with four or more legs attached at the base and a number of three meter long tendrils extending from their midsection, each ending in a claw. A mass covered in small biological structures was affixed on top of their bodies, and they each had a set of mandibles at the bottom of the cone. As far as the Foundation is aware, the majority of these entities followed the Ortothan belief, but there was an interesting minority among them. A small number of them worshipped the Holy Seven, but aimed to manipulate biological matter and worship a flesh deity in order to provide a continuous supply of blood for the Seven. These few were ostracized and destroyed by the majority, as it was thought that they were following the Vorotut. The Foundation hypothesizes that whatever was responsible for instigating these ideas among that group has also been responsible for the spread of sarcasm. It's unknown what exactly caused the failure of Earth's colonization and whether or not these aliens are extinct, but the Foundation are continuing their investigations. Of course, not all Ortothans are alien species, as the Church of the Second Hytoth itself is a human group of followers on Earth. We'll get to them in a second, but around 11,000 BCE, there was a civilization of human Ortothans known as the Earthen Ortothan Kingdom. The creation of this civilization seems to have been spurred on by the arrival of an extraterrestrial entity referred to as the Star Fallen Messenger. This messenger apparently spread the Ortothan belief and aided the civilization, particularly in teaching them various thaumaturgic rituals. Unfortunately, the emergence and spread of the Davite Empire led them into conflict, which eventually resulted in the conquering and destruction of the Ortothan Kingdom. Survivors continued to try and rebuild the kingdom over the next several thousand years, but ultimately they were completely wiped out due to an occult war in China that ended with a reality restructuring event that eliminated a great number of ancient civilizations from history. A number of much smaller groups of Ortothans have persisted into the modern day however, notably the Society of Second Hytoth, which formed in Canada in the late 1800s. This group would end up having an encounter with another extraterrestrial messenger and reformed into the Church of the Second Hytoth in the year 1900. The goals of the church are basically the same as all Ortothans, preserve Rachmo Luzin through bloodletting rituals, spread the Ortothan religion, research aspects of Ortothan history and mythology, and kill any and all Vorotut. Not every Ortothan has to do each of these things, but it's preferable to the church if they do, as the more blood that Rachmo Luzin receives and the more Vorotut that die, the better off our universe will be, according to them. Relative to other Ortothan groups and other organizations on Earth, the Church of the Second Hytoth is fairly small, although they are spread across the globe. They operate multiple churches in a number of major cities, the largest being in Canada where the original group was formed. Most of their churches however are tucked away from public sight in pocket dimensions accessible through ways or portals. As much as the church would like to be a very public oriented group, they are forced into secrecy due to groups that suppress the anomalous, such as the Foundation. Part of that is due to the thaumaturgical practices of the church's members, but also due to the fact that not everyone in the church is human. A small but prominent number of the group are entities originating from other regions of the Milky Way, either coming here to assist in proselytization or due to fleeing their home systems, likely due to the Twelve Stars. Due to these entities, the Church of the Second Hytoth possesses more information about phenomena and locations outside of our solar system than practically anyone on Earth, including the Foundation. These entities have also brought bits of their own technology to the Church, which the members use routinely. Despite this, however, the Church really has no way to contact other Ortothan groups in the universe, and it's unclear if other groups by and large even know of the Church's existence. Most of the church's beliefs and doctrine stem from Rachmo Luzin's actions, which form the group's central tenets. The first tenet is being able to think strategically, as Rachmo Luzin is the greatest of strategists. 
Members of the church shouldn't charge headfirst into problems, but rather proceed slowly and analytically. The second tenet is that of kindness, as Rakamo Luzin forbid violence in the pursuit of blood, which allowed the first Ortothans to be respected by the other deities of this universe. They credit peace with their survival, and to stay peaceful is to stay Ortothan. The third is curiosity, since Rakmo Luzin succeeded by remaining open to the unknowns of reality, which allowed him to realize the danger of the Vorotut. The fourth and final tenet is strength, to be as strong and as unbending as Rakmo Luzin has been, never losing hope in their goal. They must all carry this same optimism and strength to help them defend against the horrors that bombard this universe. The group is, by and large, peaceful with anyone that isn't aligned with the Vorotut, and thus maintains neutral relations with many of the other anomalous groups on Earth. The Church's overall connection with extraterrestrial entities has shaped their culture in some ways, and members of the Church are receptive to extraterrestrial concepts, even ones that are normally incomprehensible to humans. Members of the church believe in latent, non-dimensional bridges that link how entities familiar with one another perceive the world. They greet one another with their bodies briefly turned sideways, as facing one another can be seen as aggressive. They have cybernetic LED implants installed under their skin that change color as a means of communication. They can taste colors beyond the EM spectrum and some groups of members have been organized into hive-mind-like systems to maximize efficiency and collective happiness. Some members also practice a number of extraterrestrial holidays, or holidays based on such events, such as regrowth days, where members isolate themselves and focus on consuming food and rest. For most of us, these events are known as Saturday. But members of the Church of the Second High Toth base these days around how certain alien species enter regrowth machines to rejuvenate after long periods of work. While everyone in the Church of course worships Rakmo Luzin primarily, like any religion there are differences in exactly how they go about doing so. A number of small groups within the Church have looked to other deities in the Ortothan pantheon, or even ones outside of Ortothan belief, claiming that all gods must unite in order to protect the universe from the Vorotut. An even smaller number of members also worship entities that demand different moral practices entirely, and although these are allowed as long as the members still follow Rakmo Luzin, they are viewed with disdain by other members. Additionally, not all Ortothans on Earth are a part of the Church, as their beliefs vary too much from the Church's. Generally these small groups are ignored but if they bring negative attention to the church and the Ortothan religion, or are in direct conflict with the church's morals, such as murdering innocents to provide blood for Rakmo Luzin, then the church will send warriors to intervene. Details on these warriors and what exactly the church in general is capable of are sparse, although most of their members are proficient in at least one form of occult practice. Thaumaturgical or magical rituals are common particularly to commune with various minor deities in the Ortothan pantheon. In combination with the alien technology available to them, it's believed that, if called to action, the church could be a fearsome threat. Fortunately, the Foundation doesn't believe that they will ever use these capabilities against our world. They have however heard rumors that the church possesses the knowledge of a ritual that could summon an avatar of Rakmo Luzin himself to Earth which could potentially be very worrisome. Of all the known extraterrestrial civilizations, approximately 8% of them follow the Ortothan belief system in some way, with these civilizations ranging in technological capability from being near human to being beyond all theorized levels. As mentioned, not all worship in the same way as the Church of the Second High Toth with a number firmly believing in the necessity of murder in order to provide Rakmo Luzin with blood. Conflicts between extraterrestrial or Tothan civilizations are not unheard of. Singular individuals or small groups sometimes make their way to Earth for various reasons, but no civilization aside from the ones that tried to colonize Earth long ago have been present in our solar system. 
This is apparently due to our overall lack of valuable resources and noteworthy features, compared to other stellar regions. Overall, the religion stands at sort of an odd point as far as the SCP Foundation is concerned. On one hand, they certainly seem to care about the fate of our universe and want to keep it safe from harm, with the majority of them being quite peaceful. But, on the other hand, they are still a group messing around with things far beyond human normalcy, and the Anomalous has a tendency to go deeply awry. That being said, capturing members of the Church of the Second Hightoth isn't really a high priority for the Foundation, compared to plenty of other tasks. And, if things do really go wrong, such as in SCP-1548, we'll likely be pretty glad that they're around.